<laughs> so EcoCar is uh, one of the most prominent uh, student competitions in the uh, university space. Now in the K through 12 space, uh, the most prominent competition is FIRST. And of course, it wouldn't be a day three keynote if I wasn't up here promoting FIRST. So last year, FIRST uh, impacted over 200,000 children around the world, about 20,000 teams. Uh, they take advantage of our technology in all of their programs uh, using NI Compact Rio, LabVIEW, and also the LabVIEW-based software that we developed for LEGO Mindstorms and LEGO WeDo. And I want to thank each of you who are involved in FIRST, whether you're mentoring a team or sponsoring your team, or perhaps one of the suppliers that donated equipment to us so that we could donate the controllers uh, to all the FIRST robotics teams. And I also want to encourage each of you, if you're not involved with FIRST, please take advantage of your technical talents and your passion for science and engineering in considering being a part of the FIRST family. As Woody Flowers likes to say, it's the hardest fun you'll ever have. Now FIRST stands for, for inspiration and recognition of science and technology. So what could be more inspiring than creating technology that makes it possible for a blind person to drive? Well, this team of students is putting new meaning into the phrase driving blind. Check it out. Next January, preceding the Rolex 24, the first car drivable by the blind will be demonstrated at the Daytona International Speedway. We have to build inside the machine a piece of technology that will let us perceive the exterior world. To accomplish our goal, the National Federation of the Blind will work in partnership with universities and technology manufacturers to combine our pioneering enterprise with their technical expertise to make the dream of a car drivable by the blind a reality. In 2009, the National Federation of the Blind and Virginia Tech created the first prototype of a blind drivable vehicle. It gives you um, freedom and it really brings into reality that this could happen someday. The blind drivable car is one of the most exciting opportunities to build new technologies to bring information to the blind that we have ever undertaken. Please welcome from the Romella Lab, also from Virginia Tech, Dr. Dennis Hogg, Greg Janneman, and Kimberly Wenger. Hey, Dr. Hogg. Yeah. Thanks for having us. So you're probably already familiar with some of the very exciting robotics projects that we were working on in Romella, the Robotics and Mechanisms Laboratory at Virginia Tech, such as the fully autonomous miniature humanoid robot, Darwin, that plays soccer. Uh, we just came back from Singapore, and I'm happy to announce that we won third place and fourth place in RoboCup 2010. Thank you. And now the very famous Odin, the fully autonomous vehicle for the urban environment, where we teamed up with Torque Technologies, where we won half a million dollars by placing third place at the DARPA Urban Challenge. And besides that, we have many, many exciting robotics projects, all used uh, uh, National Instruments technology. However, today, we have something very different. As a matter of fact, uh, I can probably call this a robotics project. So we call this project the Blind Driver Challenge. And we have developed the very first and only vehicle in the world that can be driven by the blind. So in 2007, NFB, the National Federation of Blind, challenged the research community about who can develop a car that can be driven by the blind. So at the time, at Virginia Tech, we already had a fantastic research program in autonomous vehicles. So we thought, hey, we already have a vehicle. We just yank out the drive by wire system, and a person inside there, and you're done, right? <laughs> we couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> so what NFB wanted was not a vehicle which can drive a blind person around, but a vehicle where a blind person can actually drive by making active decisions. So we had to uh, start from scratch. So today, uh, we'd like to demonstrate some of the non-visual user interface technology that we developed for this project. And today, we have uh, Greg Janneman and Kim Kimberly Wenger on stage. Greg? Thanks, Dr. Hong. So in order to prove that a blind person can indeed safely operate a motor vehicle, you first need to demonstrate the ability to, uh, to actually perform three fundamental driving tasks, the first of which is the ability to regulate their speed. Next is the ability to perform an emergency stop when necessary. And finally, to navigate through and maintain their position within a driving lane. 
Now, the first step in our system is to detect our environment. We do this using a laser range finder, or LIDAR. Uh, the LIDAR scans the environment ahead of us and applies with information based on the location of any obstacles that may be in our way. Now, we supplement the information from the LIDAR with additional uh, data from additional sensors monitoring the vehicle state, things like steering angle and speed. We bring all that together, and it gives us a good understanding of where we are in our environment. Now, that's all great, but it's useless without a way to effectively and efficiently relay that information to the driver. Now, we are able to relay that information to the driver using multiple non-visual driver interfaces. First, we have a tactile vest that vibrates to alert the driver of speed regulation and emergency stop. Audio cues are used to give turn-by-turn -turn direction to the driver regarding navigation. We also have a pair of gloves called drive grip that have vibrating motors on the top of each of the fingers to give information regarding steering. Finally, we wanted to create an interface that was much more informational as opposed to instructional, and we also wanted the driver to be able to make their own driving decisions. Therefore, we created a system called AirPix. And AirPix is a plate with a grid of orifices that uses compressed air to portray a refreshable map to the blind driver.